Hello everybody. That, that sounded a bit creepy. Uh, I've been getting uh, the same question over and over again, so I thought it'd be good to spend some time just talking about it. And that is, what can you eat in type 2 diabetes for breakfast? And it also comes up quite frequently in our type 2 education sessions for newly diagnosed patients. So it's definitely something that people do wonder about. So if, you've, if you're someone that's had this question, then you're definitely not alone. Now, I guess the first thing to say is you can eat whatever you want, really, you know. Uh, so, so I guess what they're really asking is what can I eat to keep my blood sugar levels controlled? And we know that breakfast is a particular tricky time of the day because in the morning your body produces hormones to get you ready for getting out of bed. And these make you become more insulin resistant. We see this in type 1 diabetes, we actually call it a dawn phenomenon, where their glucose levels might be stable all night, but then around 4 or 5 a.m. you see a big kick up in their glucose levels. And this will also happen in type 2 diabetes, but obviously they are producing their own insulin, so it's not so pronounced. Then for breakfast, what we do is we eat really carby stuff. So for some reason, probably from uh, historical marketing, our go-tos at breakfast are cereals, porridge, toast, um, and then also depends what you're putting on that toast. So you kind of get a doubling effect. You might get this dawn phenomenon or these further insulin resistance in the morning, and then you have a lot of carbohydrates on top of that. So it's, uh, it can be a tricky meal to manage. We particularly see this as a problem in gestational diabetes, where they become very insulin resistant because of their placenta. So I'm just going to change this camera angle here. So I'm trying a new point and shoot method here because it's much quicker. So what can you do about it? Well, I guess you kind of need to work backwards. So first of all, are your glucose levels going high after breakfast? You can test this two ways. If you're testing your blood sugar levels, um, well, actually you can test it three ways. If you're testing your blood sugar levels, you could test at the next meal before the next meal at lunch, but that won't show you a spike in between the meals if it's happening. So you could do a two hour post meal test to see what's happening. If it's spiking up, then it shows you your choice is probably too much carbs or too quickly releasing carbohydrates. Um, you can also test from a HbA1c test. So what's your average glucose levels doing? Because ultimately that's what we're concerned with. Uh, if your glucose levels are pretty steady most of the time, because the HbA1c is an average, so you could be swinging between 20 and two and have the same HbA1c as someone that's consistently running at around, I don't know, nine, 10, 11. So it's not, a, it's not a perfect measure, but it does give us an indication. Particularly if you're not taking medication that's going to push your blood glucose levels low, then you can probably be assured that your glucose levels aren't going to be running at 2. And this is probably more, um, this, is, this is definitely more for type 2 diabetes, though I do appreciate some of you may be on insulin or a sulfonylurea like glycoside that can make you hypo. But the other meds, you shouldn't be hypoing with. So if you're not on them, then your HbA1c is probably more of an accurate measurement. Okay, I'm just going to change that. So back to our question then, what can you eat for breakfast? So once you've figured out what your glucose levels are doing, so you can test next meal, you can, tow, you can test um, between meals, or you can look at HbA1c. And then depending on what your glucose levels are doing, if they're okay, then you probably don't need to change your, your breakfast because what you're doing is working. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. But of course, I also appreciate that you might be having a few medications. So then if we remove those medications, your glucose levels might do something completely different at breakfast. So if you want to do it without medication, or if you are dietary controlled and you just want to be assured that your glucose levels aren't going to go high, then you've got to reduce the carbohydrate load. And by that, I mean the amount of carbohydrate that you're having at the meal. <clears throat> so a good example of this would be going down from two slices of toast and perhaps let's say you put some jam or marmalade on it, take the marmalade off, drop one slice of toast and add in a couple of eggs or some vegetables um, and have a more of a continental breakfast even. So then you've reduced the amount of carbohydrates that's going into you. You've added some protein, which will keep you fuller for longer because protein is the most filling nutrient. And then you can be assured that you're not going to have the same spike that you had previously. Second thing that you can do is the type of carbohydrate. So choose a more whole grain, seeded, slower releasing carbohydrates. That usually helps to level out the um, increases between meals because if you're having very quickly absorbed carbohydrates like white bread, um, I don't know who would have this, but like white pasta, you never know. White rice, we do get that with some of our um, Asian or, um, well, yeah, mostly Asian communities, to be fair, the sorts of patients that I see. 
do tell me that they tend to have some rice and curry for breakfast. So if you're having white rice, then that might actually lead to that increase in your glucose levels between meals. So something more like brown rice would be a better example. Porridge tends to be slower releasing, but actually overnight oats goes one step further because the, the, um, the starch starts to bind up overnight in the fridge. And also you have a bit more control over what actually goes into that because you could bulk it out with things like nuts and seeds and yogurt, which has a lower carb, a hydrate content compared to porridge oats themselves. And then you could also add in some like berries and stuff, you know, berries, blueberries, for example, that's seven grams of carbohydrate per hundred. Porridge oats is somewhere between 60 and 80. So almost 10 times the amount of carbohydrate in it compared to the blueberries. So these are little tricks that you can put into place to lower that carbohydrate load in the morning. And I think that probably most of the things I wanted to talk about. So hopefully that's clear. So the idea is that you can chew, you can manipulate two factors, the type of carbohydrate and the amount of carbohydrate. So if you want to guarantee that your glucose levels aren't spiking, reduce the carbohydrate and replace it with things like vegetables and protein, because generally these won't affect your glucose levels, and aim for the more slower releasing carbohydrates. Lots of information about that on my blog at diabetesdietguide.com. And also just remember to think about your starting position. What's your HbA1c doing? Because if it's not broke, don't fix it. See you later.